Man, that was quite a rough intro. <clears throat> hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. And welcome to another episode of the Year of the Dog. Now, after previously blogging both last episode, I've decided to look at another Disney dog film. But before I start talk about the movie itself, let me give you a little background info. In 1956, English children's novelist Dodie Smith wrote a story called The 101 Dalmatians or The Great Dog Robbery, which is about a kidnapping of a family of 101 Dalmatian dogs. And in my opinion, it sounds like a book that I'd be interested in reading someday. Plus, the book got a sequel called The Starlight Barking. Also, this is one of many stories that were adapted by Disney. And you would not believe how many times they put these famous Dalmatians on screen. I mean, they did one time as an animated movie in 1961 a live-action remake in 1996, which got a sequel in 2000, and there was an animated TV series, which ran from 1997 to 1998, as well as a direct-to-video sequel in 2003, and I hear Disney Junior is bringing us a new TV show called 101 Dalmatian Street, which will be airing on TV next year. Man. Anyway, thanks to a generous request from my friend Andrew Rear, I'll be looking at an animated film where the Dalmatians made their first big screen debut. So let's get started. Released on January 25th, 1961, the movie is 101 Dalmatians. Now let's get started. Pongo is tired of his bachelor dog life. He spies lovely Perdita and maneuvers his pet, Roger Radcliffe, into meeting Perdita's owner, Anita. The owners fall in love and get married, keeping Pongo and Perdita together. After Perdita gives birth to a litter of 15 puppies, Anita's old school friend, Cruella DeVille, wants to buy them all. Thankfully, Roger declines her offer, so Cruella hires the criminal Batam brothers to steal them so that she can have a fur coat. In order to prevent this, Pongo and Perdita must rescue their children and race home back to London. So, what are my thoughts? Well, this was another childhood classic. I loved it as a fool, and I still love it to this very day. But to further explain why I enjoyed the movie, let's move on to Mustang Notes. When Walt Disney read the original book by Dodie Smith in 1957, it immediately grabbed his attention, and he promptly acquired the rights. Smith was always secretly hoping that Walt Disney would make it into a film. Hmm, I guess she was easier to deal with than P.L. Travers, huh? Anyway, Disney assigned Bill Peet to write the story, which he did, making the first time the story for an animated film was written by a single person. Writing in his autobiography, Pete was tasked by Walt to write a detailed screenplay first before storyboarding it. Because Pete never learned to use a typewriter, he wrote the initial draft hand on large yellow tablets. He considered the elements of the original book by, while enlarging others, some of which included eliminating Cruella's husband and a cat as well as compressing the two surrogative mother dogs into one character, Perdita. He also retained a scene in which Pongo and Perdita 
exchange wedding vows alongside their owners, by which the censor board warned that it might offend certain religious audiences if the animals repeated the exact words of a solemn religious ceremony. The scene was reworked to be less religious, with Roger and Anita dressed in formal clothing. Two months later, Pete completed the manuscript and had it typed up. Walt said that the script was great stuff and commissioned Pete to begin storyboarding. Additionally, Pete was charged with the recording of the voiceover process. Although Disney had not been involved in the production of the animated films as frequently as in the previous years, nevertheless, he was always present at story meetings. When Pete sent Dodie Smith some drawings of the characters, she wrote back saying that he had, well, actually improved her story and that the designs looked better than the illustrations in the book. Hmm. Interesting. Also, this movie got its commercial success due to the employment of inexpensive animation techniques, such as using zero, well, xerography during the process of inking and painting traditional animation cells, which kept production costs down. Also, as with the previous Disney films like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Alice in Wonderland, actors provided live-action references in order to determine what would work before the animation process begun. So, what are my thoughts on the animation? Well, it's classic Disney animation, so there's nothing to complain about here. Also, in my opinion, I think it must have been hard for Disney to draw and animate that many puppies. Plus, there's a, a scene involving Sergeant Tibbs hanging from a window, which was recycled from Pinocchio. And there's a shot that was recycled from Peter Pan, which happens to be a shot of Big Ben. Speaking of which... I know you guys have heard me say this many times on my show, but I can't believe it's been eight years since I went to London with my family. Also, a while ago, I discovered on Google that Suffolk, the place where the puppies were located, isn't that far from London. You see, it takes about two hours to drive there, so... Imagine how long it must have taken for Pongo and Perdita to get there on foot. Now, the scenes in this movie that I thought were very memorable was the Twilight Bark, as well as a few chase scenes between Horace, Jasper, and Sergeant Tibbs. Plus, the driving chase nearing the end of the movie was very scary due to Cruella de Vil's reckless driving. Also, I like the part where the Dalmatians roll in soot in order to fool Cruella into thinking that they're Labradors. Unfortunately, their disguise gets blown when icicles drip on them. Oh, bonus fact. I'm surprised that this movie influenced a little quest in the first Kingdom Hearts game. For those who haven't played it yet, Pongo and Perdita have taken shelter in a house in the second district of Traverse Town, but their children have been scattered throughout many worlds. So it's your job to find them while opening treasure chests that contain three puppies in each of them. And if you find them all, then you'll get a special magic upgrade. Also, while this movie does feature a few songs in it, I cannot consider it a musical. But anyway, in my opinion, the K9 Crunchy song is, well, a pretty cute commercial song. And I like Roger's Dalmatian Plantation song at the end of the movie, which foreshadows the Ratcliffe's future country home. But the best song in the movie, in my opinion, is the villain song.
Cruella de Vil. While it's not really sung by the villain, per se, I really think the instrumentals and the lyrics are great when it comes to describing Cruella before we even see her. Plus, I like the parts where Roger plays different instruments throughout the song, like a piano, a trumpet, and a trombone. Now let's talk about the characters and the voice actors who brought them to life. Let's start with Pongo, voiced by Rod Taylor, who sadly passed away three years ago. Now, Pongo is a laid-back, playful, and a pretty, well, silly Dalmatian, but he's extremely loyal, and he took note on Roger's loneliness as a songwriting bachelor thus making it his mission to find him a suitable companion. Pongo is also shown to be very intelligent, tactical, and stealthy. With his wits, he was easily able to outsmart the cunning Cruella de Vil and her bumbling henchmen. Next we have Pongo's mate, Perdita, voiced by Kate Bauer. Perdita is a beautiful Dalmatian, and she is very well-mannered, and she's very elegant and radiant, which makes her a complete foil to Pongo's goofy nature. She's also rather stern, and appears to be a tad more prominent when it comes to disciplining her children, as well as the rascally Pongo. Despite her well-coordinated nature, Perdita tends to be incredibly worrisome in hectic situations and prefers to avoid oncoming conflicts by leaving the scene, as shown when Cruella visits the Ratcliffe's house. On the other hand, Perdita is a fierce warrior and will jump into battle when the situation calls for it. Next we come to Pongo and Perdita's puppies. Voiced by Mimi Gibson, Barbara Baird, Mickey Maga, Sandra Abbott, Mary Wicks, Barbara Luddy, and Ricky Sorensen. Now, some of the puppies who stick out the most are Lucky, who loves watching TV and is portrayed as a troublemaker, Rolly, who is always hungry and is shown as pudgier than the rest of the puppies, Patch, who's an aggressive puppy who loves the Thunderbolt TV show and has a spot on his eye, Penny, the only puppy not named for her appearance or habits, and Freckles, who has a pattern of spots over the bridge of her nose resembling f freckles on a human child. And she's shown very tired, or she's shown asking many questions. Plus, I'm glad that Pongo and Perdita adopted the other 84 puppies that Cruella kidnapped. Next we have Pongo's pet, Roger Radcliffe, voiced by Ben Wright. Whom, after this movie, voiced Rama in The Jungle Book and Grimsby in The Little Mermaid. Now, Roger works as a songwriter and later became rich when creating a song about Cruella de Vil. Plus, I like the part where Roger saved Lucky from his quote-unquote death by rubbing him. Next we have Roger's wife, Anita, voiced by Lisa Davis. In my opinion, Anita is beautiful, kind, and smart. She's also shown to be devoted to her husband and loving towards Perdita, Pongo, and their puppies. Plus, it's hard to believe that she and Cruella were childhood schoolmates. Next up, we have Nanny, voiced by Martha Wentworth, who would later voice Madame Mim in The Sword in the Stone. Nanny is very maternal and fussy. 
she deeply detests Cruella. I mean, who wouldn't hate her? And she has no patience for teasing. Plus, she's very attached to the puppies as if they were her own children. But, unfortunately, Nanny is worthless in a crisis, except when she gives out the alarm. Next up, we come to our villain, Cruella DeVille, voiced by Betty Lou Gerson, whom I talked about in my blog of Cats Don't Dance. Cruella is a cruel, eccentric heiress who has Pongo and Perdita's puppies kidnapped with the intention of making fur coats out of them. Now that's just plain cruel and evil. She has an obsession for pelts, but is only shown wearing a single fur coat. Beneath this, she wears a skin-tight black dress. Cruella smokes constantly, and she drives a long red Bucati Type 57. She was also Anita's former classmate, which is why Anita assumes good faith that Cruella is well-meaning, despite her eccentric behavior. Roger, on the other hand, is far less trusting, and he deeply suspects her of being the one to kidnap the puppies, and, of course, he was correct. However, I know this is well off-subject, but while Cruella is very threatening in this movie, as well as in the nighttime show Fantasmic at Disneyland, and in Mickey's House of Villains, I wonder why she's not on Maleficent's team in Kingdom Hearts. Plus, I'm a tad curious on how Emma Stone will be as Cruella in the future. Next we have Cruella's comic relief henchmen, Horace and Jasper. Jasper is voiced by J. Pat O'Malley who got to be in The Avengers of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, Alice in Wonderland, Mary Poppins, Hello Dolly, and Robin Hood. As for Horace, well, he's voiced by Frederick Warlock. Now, these two carry out the kidnapping of the Dalmatian puppies. Jasper is tall and thin, while Horace is short and chubby. Otherwise, they are obviously fraternal twin brothers. Although they appear to be, well, pretty stupid, Horace appears to be the more intelligent of the two, but he is absolutely intimidated by his brother who has the more ready tongue. Jasper has a closed mind to the possibility of, well, sap sapience in dogs, as well as the equal possibility of cleverness in his brother. Jasper drinks alcohol, whereas Horace eats sandwiches. Both enjoy watching a weekly television program called What's My Crime? wherein the misdeeds of lawbreakers are guessed by a panel of contestants. One of the guest stars in the program, Percival Meathead Falsewater, is, well, an acquaintance of theirs. Our first supporting dog is a Great Dane named Danny, voiced by George Pelling. This guy is the first dog who hears the news about Pongo and Perdita's stolen puppies. So, he spreads the word to all the other dogs of London. Later in the movie, Danny informs Pongo about where the puppies were located and gives him and his wife instructions. Also, he tells Pongo that if he and Perdita lose their way, they should contact the barking chain. Next we have Old Towser, a bloodhound voiced by Tudor Owen, who got to be in Jack the Giant Killer. 
Towser doesn't do too much in this movie, but I do like when he, with help from his goose friend Lucy, sends the Twilight Bark message to his friend the Colonel. Speaking of which, next we have the Colonel, a sheepdog also voiced by J. Pat O'Malley. With him are his friends, a horse named Captain, voiced by former Mellow Man Thurl Ravenscroft, best known for voicing Tony the Tiger from the Frosted Flakes commercials, as well as voicing in several Disneyland rides. And there's a tabby cat named Sergeant Tibbs, voiced by David Frankham. To me, these guys play a big part in rescuing the puppies, even though Tibbs does most of the work, like sneaking around the DeVille mansion and helping the puppies escape. Later in the film, Tibbs, along with Colonel and Captain, help Pongo and the others escape by attacking Horace and Jasper. Next we come to a collie, voiced by Tom Conway, whom before this movie narrated Peter Pan. Now, this character offers the Dalmatian shelter for the night at a dairy farm. Next we have the collie's friends, the dairy farm cows, who are named Queenie, Princess, and Duchess. In my opinion, these gals are sweet when giving the puppies their milk. The last supporting character is a Labrador Retriever, voiced by Ramsay Hill. This character aids the Dalmatians in getting back home to London by arranging a ride in a truck driven by his owner. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, 101 Dalmatians is a classic dog movie to come from the House of Mouse. The movie is fun and humorous. Pongo and Perdita are wonderful parents, and I'm glad they adopted the other stolen puppies. Roger, Anita, and Nanny are memorable and supportive to the Dalmatians. The supporting characters like Danny, Towser, Colonel, Sergeant Tibbs, Captain, the Collie, the Dairy Cows and the Labrador are great when assisting the Dalmatians, and the villain, Cruella de Vil, is really nasty and truly deserves to be among one of the most threatening villains in the history of Disney. If you folks haven't seen this movie yet, do so, and I'm sure you and your children will love it. I give this film a 99% out of 100. Well. That's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me again next time as we move away from Disney and head on over to Nickelodeon to take in a room at a hotel for dogs. Mustang Power. <laughs>